I, I feel like I'm going to hurt him on the feet and I feel like I'm going to finish him on the ground. I'm going to, I'm going to rip the salt from that man's body. Thanks very much for the time, Luke, during fight week. I really do appreciate it. Um, first fight week in, in over three years. I mean, how, how does it feel to be getting back to the grind? It feels great, man. It feels, it was a, it was a long journey in training camp and a lot of ups and downs, like all training camps are. This one was a lot longer than all of them. <laughs> Paulo, uh, you know, I, I kind of had word of this fight coming for a while and Paulo resisted the fight um, at first. And, and uh, you know, I was told it was going to happen for, for a, a month or more, maybe. So I was already like kind of in, in this mindset. And then, and then we were scheduled for uh, international fight week. He bitched and complained. We pushed it to Dallas, and and then the and then he again something happened, and we and we ended up pushing into August, and so this thing just kept dragging on and on. Um, it's uh it's trying to balance and, and stabilize myself through the process was key, uh, and uh, you know I just feel like I'm getting stronger. You know I, I hit I hit some hard points where you question yourself, like all training camps do, especially at this stage, but um, you know we got through those points and. Uh, and now here at fight week, I just feel, feel stronger than ever, you know, within this training camp, everything, I feel like, you know, those questions about myself have, have gone out the door and uh, I'm ready to fight. And you, you, you touched about f feeling your best and feeling stronger. The last time I spoke to you, was, it was during the pandemic and you were still de dealing with injuries with, uh, with, with your, you had a, a labor issue. And then obviously you were still recovering from your shin. How, how do you feel physically now, especially after the long layoff? Yeah, no, I feel I feel amazing, man. It's it's been a long journey. COVID kind of drived us all a bit insane, um, and uh, I kind of yeah, I know I, we all had I went we all kind of went off the deep end probably a little bit. We all you know drank a little much, maybe did a little too much, and and uh, we're all stuck in this in this messed up world. So, um, you know, I hit I hit some points, some low points, and. Uh, and I, and I was just, you know, you got to hit a low to, to understand, you know, the value of life. So um, I hit some bad points in life and, and I just started to really invest in myself, you know, and change for the better. You know, I, I, I found, <clears throat> excuse me, but I decided to, to drop alcohol and to, uh, and to really, my body was just deteriorating, you know, and having too much fun. And, and, you know, I was training a little bit, but like drinking and having fun on the weekends. And it was just like, nothing was adding up. And this, the injuries were just not healing, you know, they, they and, uh, especially the shoulder shoulder is the most complicated joint in the body. And, and it's the most crucial for fighting. It's like, without having my lead hand, it's this, you know, there was no conscious thought of actually even trying to fight because, you know, that is your protection, you know, and, and the de deterioration of my shoulder was a, was a downfall for me. And a lot of, uh, along with the leg, the leg was, you know, sc scary as can be, you know, I almost lost a lot of my leg in that process. So really kind of tuning into my body and understanding what is the essence of health. Um, I started to kind of create my own house into this, like kind of madhouse, this uh, wellness club for, uh, for all the people around all my friends, like, you know, around the Los Angeles area and everyone started coming together and we started trying to learning like the corrective movements of life and working with specialists all around. I kind of just really invested and partnered with everybody I could to, to find out as much as I could about my body and what it, what it all comes down to and, and trying to rebuild this machine. Um, so corrective patterns and, and, and circulation and, and, you know, that I mean, almost, almost every problem that we incur in our body is due to lack of circulation. Yeah. Lack of circulation builds inflammation. It builds fat, builds toxicity in the body. Um, and so the more you can circulate, the more you can prick and move every little part of your body. And, and it's like a kitchen sink effect. You know, you got to, it's contrast therapy. It's, it's movement. It's all, these, all kinds of different things. Um, I was, I was able to navigate my health back and, you know, and then finding a very real place and a cool place that I, I connected with, with good energy, which was the Ruka team with Jason Perillo and Cheeto and McKenzie and, the, and just a tight knit group of, you know, it just kind of brought back the essence of who I was as a person, you know, finding, you know, inspiration in the gym and, and, the, and martial arts, you know, it was, it was, uh, you know, I detached myself from from a while and uh, which was necessary from the fight game too, you know, the fight game you burn out in like in like anything else we burn out that much more so in fighting of course trying to fight the baddest humans every day is it weighs on you so that time away was good 
to make me realize what, I, what who I really was and what I really wanted. And uh, like everyone says, I found the love back, you know, but this one, you know, I, I went to great lengths to, to dig this up and define my health and, and within my health, um, you know, and then like coming, even coming back and just dabbling back in, in training. And I didn't know if I wanted to fight. I know I still was like, you know, going through a lot of problems and, and with my body, I'm 37 and, you know, no, like until you get into the deep grind of that, of that of training that you can actually do this thing. And uh, Jason Perillo always, you know, told me straight, you know, he's like, you know, he, he could feel how good I was still. And, but, you know, it's like, do I really want it? Do I really want to be in there when I'm broken and bruised and, and just beat down and I can't get out of bed in the morning because I'm, I'm so stiff? It's like, do you want that? And, uh, you know, I, I put myself through it and tested myself and went around to all the teams to, to see how good I really was still. And I. Uh, I found my, I found my dog. Like I like to say, you know, you got to find that dog within you and, uh, and we're here and, uh, it's, it's, it feels fucking great, man. I feel like I've already won being here and fight week and, and rebuilding my body and, and learning all these things. And, and, uh, I know where I'm going now, you know, in life and, uh, I'm not going back. You answered quite a few of my questions I was going to ask there, but you talked about preparing for one of the baddest. Uh, no. baddest <laughs> you, you talked about preparing for the baddest human beings in the sport repeatedly. You've literally jumped straight back in at, at the deep end. There's no, there's no tune-up fight. You've, you've, you've chosen Paulo Costa. What was it particularly about this fight that that wet your competitive appetite and made you think like this is the fight that I want to return for? <clears throat> He's a killer, no doubt. He's one of the best, one of the top guys in the game. I'm not here to dabble, you know, in life. And and if I'm gonna, I'm still the best of this game. I'm still the best of this game. And I want to go straight down for the jugular, like I always do in life. I go straight for the throat. Um. So Paulo was a guy I didn't particularly. I don't like his 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 personality, him as a person, him as a fighter. Um, and uh, it's gonna get me up. It's gonna scare me. You know, I'm attracted to what scares me. And he's he's a scary individual, no doubt. But at the same time, you know, he's reached adversity, as have I. And it is a fucking it's 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 a challenge of mental strength. You know, I want to see what he is and I want to see what he brings. And, and I love the adversity of testing myself against the guy that's that is reaching adversity, too, but still at the top of the game. So this is a it's just a beautiful thing to to test a man's soul. And uh, I feel like I'm getting stronger as this fight comes closer. And I feel like he's weakening. And one thing I wanted to to ask you about because um, well, it actually came up on my well, on, on my old M- MMA Facebook. But next month is the uh, the 11 year anniversary of you winning the Strike Force middleweight world title on September September 11th, I believe it was. I mean, it it, j- it seems like yesterday, but obviously it's a, it's a quite uh, quite a long period of time. But I mean, how would you reflect on the career career since then as a whole? I mean, it's a roller coaster, no doubt, but that's how life is, you know, life is, life is beautiful. Life, life should always be like that. You know, it's a, a hills and valleys or mountains and <laughs> mountains and, and canyons, you know, it's a big ones, you know, it's, um, it's, uh, I, you know, you lose your way. Life is like, it's got that Benjamin button effect to it. You know, if, if it's, it, I want a roller coaster. I, don't, I mean, who wants to, who wants to ride through life like this? You know what I mean? I want to, I want to feel I want to feel what winning, I want to feel what losing is. I want to feel every facet of life. Some of those, you know, ill-informed, you know, I didn't need them maybe, but they, they, I don't regret them. I don't regret losing. You know, I gave you guys your first world title, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, I mean, um, you know, you know, it's, it's, uh, it obviously those things hurt, but they make you a man and they make you a human being. And they make you strive harder and, and understand more about yourself through the process. And so, uh, I, you know, I, I love my career. I know I'm, I'm, I'm happy with everything where, I mean, like, I'm, I, you know, I just want to go out. I want to give my, do myself justice. I still think that I'm, you know, I, I haven't even done nearly what, you know, I, I could have been capable of just because I get, I'm so good everywhere else in life. I want so much more in life. So I get distracted. You know, when you reach peaks, it's like, what's next, you know, and, and then, getting away from fighting for so long, you know, uh, and being able to do all these things that I thought I needed to do. 
thought I wanted, you know, and never, never could do because of 15 years of fighting and always training for fights and recovering from fights and preparing. For, it's like, you can't do these things because you just consciously think about the fights. And so it kind of like distracts you and it corrupts you and it, take, it takes the love of the game. Um, so doing all those things and realizing there's nothing there. And it wasn't a side of me that was like, that was, that was a beautiful, you know, like that, that really was me, you know, it just kind of brought me down. And what, what the best of me was, was in the fight game and whether I'm fighting or not, just training, um, it provokes and inspires me. And so getting in, getting back into the gym and, and learning my body and learning health was so key. And then, uh, surrounding myself by good energy, getting back to California and, you know, spending the years in Florida, it's just, it's not me, you know, it was, it was uh, as much as I loved Henry and the team out there is, you know, the heat and the flatness. I just, I'm not inspired, you know, I know I want mountains. I want, I want fucking things to look at to, to, to achieve, to, to strive towards, you know I mean? There's, there's different thing in, in California, the energy and the, the geography and everything it's uh it's more inspiring for me and 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 being around the people that that inspire me a lot too i mean there's there's no one more real than jason perillo in the fight game <laughs> i mean he's he tells it to you straight you need someone to keep you honest you know you need honest people in your corner and cheeto i mean it's like beautiful to watch him like kind of grow and, and and see him i've known him forever and to see his his work ethic and dedication and and how he dealt with it, you know, how he, how, you know, you got to learn from the young bucks sometimes, you know, being an old dog, it's like, you, you, you think, you know, everything, sometimes you got to check yourself and just, and pull from different people's energy. And so, you know, I've, I've gained a lot through these guys and, you know, they kind of gave me the inspiration to get back in this thing and, and know that I can do this. And final question for me, I'm conscious of uh, your time, Luke, how do you foresee the fight with Paolo playing out? <clears throat> Honestly, I see Paulo like, you know, he's, he's a one dimensional fighter. He's just a power, power thrower. Everything is power. And, and it's not a lot of like, it's a lot of intimidation and emotion. And if you check him, if you stand in that ground, you know, that you can, you can hurt this motherfucker, you know, which I can, I got all the weapons, you know, he can't fight me on the outside. He's got to come after me. He's got to come after me. Um, and so I'm going to, I'm going to threaten him on the outside and, and I'm going to threaten him on the inside, you know, and, 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 you know, he gets too close to me. No one wants to get too close to me if I got, because if I get a hold of you and you, you end up falling, the, this fight is over. There's no man that exists underneath me for any period of time. And so I, I, I feel like I'm going to hurt him on the feet and I feel like I'm going to finish him on the ground. I'm going to, I'm going to rip the salt from that man's body. All right, Luke Rockall, thank you very much for your time today. I really do appreciate it. Take care. Hopefully the weight cut goes well and good luck on Saturday. Yeah, hopefully it goes well for Paulo too. All right, Bastard. take care. Bye. Yeah.